Welcome back to the third episode of our FEM campaign, a virtual interview series in four parts leading up to World Table Tennis Day on 6th of April. Today we are talking to three FEM changers and inspiring and outstanding women who expounds the boundaries, breaks the barriers and stereotypes. They are wonderful role models who already made a history in our below sport and show us how to reach the full potential and prove that limitations live only in our minds. We are really proud to meet them today. So warm welcome to Anna Karin Alquist from Sweden, a gold medalist from London 2012 Paralympic Games, bronze medalist from Rio 2016 Paralympic Games, bronze medalist of Paratable Tennis World Championships from 2014 and 2018, and ITTF female paratable tennis star from 2013. The second guest, Alena Kanova from Slovakia, a gold medalist from Sydney 2000 Paralympic Games, silver medalist from Beijing 2008 Paralympic Games, and member of ITTF Athletes Commission. And Melissa Tapper from Australia, gold medalist from 2018 Commonwealth Games, bronze medalist from 2018 Paratable Tennis World Championships, and first Australian athlete to qualify for both Summer Olympics and Paralympics in Rio 2016. And really, it's only part of their wonderful achievements. So we are really honored to have you with us today and welcome the three of you. Thank you very much. So my colleague from HPD team, Omar, will start off our interview with the first question. Thanks a lot, Kasia. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, it's really an honor uh, to be here with our amazing panelists. Uh, you've uh, set the bar uh, very high and proved that there are no limits to what you can achieve. So thanks again for being with, uh, here with us today. Um, I would like to ask the, uh, the first question. Uh, actually, it is addressed to all of you. Uh, so maybe, uh, Anna, Karen, you can start. Um, my first question will be more about the beginning of your journey. So uh, when and how did you start uh, being involved in table tennis? Uh, what was the trigger that you started to play it professionally? Thank you for having me here. It's a great honor to, to be in this interview. I, I'm really grateful. Uh, actually, I am, I am from the table tennis family and my dad brought us uh, as small children, very young, <laughs> three years to the table tennis arena. Uh, so we were brought up in the table tennis arena. But then I didn't play for 23 years because I got to, uh, some issues with my legs. And uh, as I got ill and uh, got in the wheelchair, uh, I started to think, I've always been very active. I'm not elite uh, sportsman, but active. Uh, I love to sail, to ski, to, to swim, to ride my bicycle or rollerblade. But I couldn't do anything of that, and I didn't know what to do. And then my dad said, maybe you should try some table tennis again. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's really, really strange to say this, but, but uh, when I got in the wheelchair, I, I was so afraid. I couldn't go out of my house. I, uh, I was afraid to meet people outside. I was afraid to be judged for not being able to walk. Um, so go to a training with table tennis was really a huge effort for me. And my dad and mom and dad had to bring me to, to the first training. And that was such an inspiring moment. And that was a great change for me because I met a world of people with different, different disabilities. I, I would say abilities, because they showed me the possibilities of life, that I could do everything, and that I was the same person as I was before, just being in a wheelchair. And that were 
was where I started my career, and that was in 2007. And someone told me I was good, so <laughs> I continued to play. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Anna, for sharing uh, such a great inspiration story. Uh, as you said, uh, of course, it's it's very inspiring to uh, every and each one who is afraid to try uh, a sport uh, who can go out and uh, actually uh, being passionate about uh, table tennis, especially. So thanks so much. Um, what about you, uh, Elena? Uh, uh, I want to, you know, we want to hear at the beginning of your journey, how did you start table tennis and what was the trigger for you to play it professionally? Thank you, Omar. Hello, everybody. So I started playing table tennis in 1995. It was right after the car accident. I was in the rehabilitation center where I met our table tennis players and I tried it. I loved skiing, but in, I had a better result in, in table tennis. So because of this, I'm playing really very long time. But from the first international tournament in 1996 until 2015, I always get a medal at the, each tournament. Uh, I was lucky go because uh, from the beginning I had a big support from my family and I get the best coach and the best team. So really I want to thanks to them. Uh, I also played table tennis before this accident, but uh, only at the home because we had a table. But with my, we played with my friends and uh, my family. Thanks a lot, Elena, for sharing with us uh, your experience. Um, and now, uh, what about you, Melissa? I know you have a very uh, unique story, uh, especially in the uh, beginning playing table tennis. So can you share with us how you how did you start table tennis and um, when did you actually start to play it uh, professionally? Yeah, yeah. Hi, guys. Um, yeah, so I guess I was eight years old when I first ever picked up a table tennis bat. And that was in primary school. Uh, I also, like Anna, played a, a lot of sport and I absolutely loved it, played everything I could. And table tennis was just another sport to give it a go. Um, I was terrible at it. I could not hit the ball. It was like back barrier under the table. And that was if I was lucky enough to even hit it. So, um, but I had so much fun when I was playing and that was pretty much what hooked me in and kept me going back just to the local club but I guess I grew up in the table tennis side in the able-bodied world I never knew the Paralympics existed until I was about 19 um, and I the Paral Paralympics Australia offered for me to head over to an international event which was over in Jordan so that was in 2009 and that was my first ever experience of a, a Paralympic event. And that completely uh, changed my world, actually. Um, and also very similar to as what Anna said, I, I walked into a stadium that I guess was supposed to be filled with athletes that have a disability. Yet the only thing I saw was every athlete's incredible ability to play sport and go out there and just fight as hard as they could and just wanting to be the best that they that they were. So I guess as an individual that grew up um, never looking at myself as having a disability, I walked into this stadium but totally fell in love with Paralympic sport and the complete rawness, I guess, that it provided and I wanted to be a part of it. And so pretty much from 2009 onwards, I um, haven't looked back from playing Paralympic sport. Thanks a lot, Mish. Of course, um, the passion, the, the energy, everything when you uh, first walk uh, in the stadium of uh, Paralympics and para table tennis, it's uncomparable. Uh, so thanks a lot for sharing with us. Uh, so it, it's really amazing to hear how the champions are starting their careers because, again, all of us were beginners one day, right? 
Um, and I will um, uh, stay with Melissa uh, with the next question. So during the introduction, uh, I've just mentioned that you were the first Australian athlete uh, who participated in both uh, Olympic and Paralympic uh, Games in Rio. And can you share with us uh, the, the differences in, in your experience, uh, maybe a feeling um, in, uh, in regards to the participation, uh, yes, in the Olympics and Paralympic Games? Yeah, I guess, um, I guess the cool thing about a Paralympic Games though and an Olympic Games is uh, they coincide with one another. So they're the same event, but just held for four weeks apart um, or however long that it ends up being. But the, the biggest change that I see is um, when the Paralympics came in, there was just a few extra ramps here and there. And, um, but all, all in all, you know, it's the exact same venues. It's the same dining hall. It's the same village. So uh, in that sense, you know, every athlete gets to turn up and compete in the same environment, which I think is really awesome. And in saying that as well, every athlete, whether it was Olympic or Paralympic, um, plays sport because they love it and they want to turn up on the world stage um, and do their best. So that for me definitely did not differ between Olympic and Paralympic, but I, I do have a... a softer side towards the Paralympics. I think the environment, the atmosphere, the com um, camaraderie is just another level, I think. So for me, um, I absolutely love the Olympics, but my heart definitely lies with the Paralympics. Thank you for sharing. Yes, I, I believe every athlete has this dream, Olympic or Paralympic, but it's a dream, right? Mm -hmm. um, exactly. <laughs> So just, just uh, actually stay with you for one more. Then I want to ask about uh, uh, some, some challenges uh, because we know that life is uh, full of both um, opportunities, uh, but also challenges. And uh, what is your greatest motivation or strength to overcome if any are coming on your way? Yeah, I mean, definitely have challenges. I mean, on a daily basis, there's always a challenge that I think everyone's presented with. But uh, I, I love motivation when I have it, but it's not always there. And it's sometimes very hard to find. So I have become as an athlete, and I think a lot would probably be quite similar. Um, I'm very re reliant upon my own discipline. Um, so I know that uh, to achieve goals and to improve and to be better um, that I, I need to rely on discipline on top of more so than motivation and then with this when I know I can't be bothered I know I can still get up and go do what I need to do to help achieve a long-term goal so I think whatever challenges anyone is presented with if you want something enough you will find a way to get going and try to achieve it. Thank you for inspiring answer. Um, I would like to now uh, address my question to Anna Karim. Um, I believe you have um, many special moments in your career, uh, but which moment is the most uh, memorable for you? By far. Uh, the most memorable is, of course, the when I won the gold in the Paralympic game in London 2012. It's, it's huge. I still cry <laughs> when I think about it. Actually, it's 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 huge, and um, it's very important to me, of course. Um, also, when I um, got the the ITTF Star Award in Dubai in 2013, that was a really huge moment for me. Thank you. Yeah, I I believe. Um, that was an amazing moment, but uh, still many, more, many amazing moments are in front of you. I hope so. <laughs> um, I would like to stay with you for one more question. Um, um, I would like to ask, uh, what is uh, one important lesson you've learned uh, throughout some, uh, impress such an impressive career uh, by far? 
um, that um, for me, uh, my family and friends are very important to me, and uh, I, I I need them to to be able to uh, to work hard, to stay motivated, to be a part of my life, and uh, so I do this journey together with them, and that's uh, so important. Uh, every time. After four years, I, I um, reconnect with everyone and ask, should we do another four years? <laughs> Just to be sure everyone is on board, uh, because I couldn't do, them, do it without them. Of course, the support of our beloved ones is so precious. It is. Thank you for sharing. Um, I would like to now... Um, uh, pass to um, Alena. Um, I believe, uh, yes, every uh, athlete has this dream, either Olympic or Paralympic dream. And um, what was your key to success which led you to this uh, gold medal in Sydney Paralympic Games? Uh, yeah, it was many years ago. But uh, when I started playing table tennis, I had no idea about uh, Paralympic Games. My first goal was to be part of the Slovak champion, the championships. Of course, I practiced table tennis a lot. I was skiing, swimming and uh, all other sports. But I always say that uh, behind every medal is the success of the whole team that helped me to do it. But in my life, uh, tennis uh, has always been in the second place. The first, uh, my, priori my priority was to first to study. I studied law and diplomacy. And after my studies, uh, to have a good job. Uh, and last six years, the biggest pri priority are my two kids. <laughs> Because uh, special now in this COVID time, it's, uh, it's not so not so easy. But uh, I'm happy that we can be so often together. My my career is very long. I attend oh, five summer and one winter Paralympic Games because uh, I was in Sochi with the water curling, and uh, I hope Tokyo will be my my seven Paralympics. So. I didn't know that that I can be part of the Paralympic family and, and that I will be playing table tennis so long time. Amazing. We are very happy that you're playing table tennis. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I would like to also ask the same question uh, about the lessons. What in your case was the most important lesson that you've learned throughout your career? And so two important things, keep smiling <laughs> and never say, and never say, I can't do that. Very inspiring. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So much, uh, Elena. Of course, uh, it's a uh, huge milestones and of course, uh, a great record. Um, and of course, we wish you uh, very good luck, uh, especially in Tokyo. <laughs> Um, I would like to address also the next question to you. Um, being representative of bar athlete in the athletes committee is a big responsibility. Um, what is your main mission as a member of ITTF Athletes Commission? And what are the common challenges that athletes share with you? Uh, actually, we are two para ITTF Athletes Commission members, me and Trevor from Australia. Trevor represent uh, standing players and uh, I represent wheelchairs. We are something like a bridge between uh, our para players and uh, para committee. Usually questions are regarding better playing condition, uh, better playing system about uh, ranking tournament and so on. But uh, on the other side, on the other hand, we address the players and uh, ask their opinions on some issues. Of course, we can't solve every problem, but we try to find a solution. 
I can say Trevor is doing a very good job. And also we have a good uh, cooperation with other ITTF uh, AC members. Yeah, I would say, of course, you and Trevor are doing a great job uh, being, of course, a representative uh, for uh, all athletes. Um, uh, is a great honor and of course you're you're really doing uh, an amazing job recording that um but you know you were talking uh, earlier about challenges so um, i want to ask you about uh, the challenges that came your way and how did you overcome these challenges my challenges uh, if you mean in table tennis my biggest challenges are paralympic medals <laughs> Because before each Paralympics, I have the motivation to donate or dedicate a medal to someone who helped me to win a medal. As I said before, because behind every medal is the success of the whole team that helped me to do it. Uh, so I also donate my medal. The gold medal from Sydney, I of course donated to, to my parents. The silver medal from uh, Beijing, I donated to this rehabilitation center, to the director of this center, because he was uh, like a, my second father when I started uh, my life at a wheelchair. And it was like my second life. The third bronze medal from Athens, I donated to my city where lived my schoolmates, where lived my coach, my sparrings, my, my sponsors and my fan group. And the last one from London, the bronze medal. Uh, uh, the medal has been auctioned and the money from this auction, I have been donated for the organization Leagues Against Cancer. So, also for Tokyo, I have the motivation, but it's, it's very difficult <laughs> this time, so we will see the result. And of, of course, I would like to motivate and inspire the young generation and new players with my story and my skills thinking positive and really without uh, big support from my family, I will be not able to still compete. Also my association was so kind and allowed me to, to travel and to, to, to practice also to, to my children and to my partner because uh, I started with the tournaments uh, you know, right uh, after my after the children giving birth, because if I miss it more than a year, I would lose the points in the ranking. But both daughters were great travelers, so it wasn't such a big deal. <laughs> Thanks a lot uh, for sharing with us such very, very inspiring uh, stories. And of course, uh, all the support you're doing to your family, uh, also to your city and um, to, all, uh, to all the organizations that uh, that's helping us through sports. So thanks a lot for sharing with us such an amazing uh, experience. Um, so my next question is uh, is for Melissa. Um, of course, adding to your milestones, uh, you are the first Australian to achieve Commonwealth Games glory in table tennis. So uh, how did this achievement influence your career? Uh, but also how did this result affect the popularity of the table tennis in your country? Yeah, I guess um, it was a, a pretty cool uh, and very special moment, I guess, to have won the gold at the Com Games. It was the first time I actually got to compete in front of a home crowd. So it was really nice to have people cheering for points that you win rather than all the points that you lose. So um, I think it, it was just awesome for so many people uh, in Australia to get to witness table tennis being played live and professionally. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the perception of it is being played in a backyard or in the garage. So I think that 
a lot of the comments I ended up getting after the Commonwealth Games was how amazed they were seeing table tennis played live. And I think it's completely true. It's just a matter of people seeing the sport being played professionally and they're incredibly impressed. But it's just a matter of getting them to see it, I think, has has sometimes been, been the problem. But, uh, yeah, in, in terms of that, though, there's definitely... Um, you know, our juniors are increasing, which is really exciting. Our, our pathways are increasing. Schools here now have so many tables. Kids play all the time. But now the next challenge is, I think, getting them from schools into clubs or from home into clubs. So, you know, there's uh, improvement. But, yeah, there's still plenty, I think, that needs to improve. <laughs> Yes, uh, of course, uh, changing that perspective uh, from the grassroots is very important. And as you said, of course, it's um, it's amazing having the crowd cheering for you and supporting you all the way. <laughs> um, so um, my next question is for uh, Anna Karen. Uh, we heard that you played recently in the World v uh, Veterans Championships. Um, we would like to know what motivated you to participate and what this experience added to your development. Uh, I actually love those uh, veteran championships. It's amazing to play there. There's so many people from different cultures. You're old, you're different uh, uh, color of the skin, you're uh, different ages and everyone is so happy and just enjoying table tennis and that's the huge uh, um, win for everyone actually to be there uh, and so many tables and everyone is just uh, having fun um, for me uh, I, I play only able-bodied players at home and I play the league, able-bodied league, yeah, the men's league here in Sweden. So for me, it's pretty natural to, to play those events as well. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm old. I, have, I, I can play the 50th class next year. So <laughs> no, but actually it's good for me to get uh, different uh, matches uh different materials different playing styles and i think it, it develops me as a player as well yeah, of course uh, thanks a lot anna of course uh, this experience was different but as you said it's it's uh, it's always great uh, uh, playing in such uh, culture thanks a lot um so now i'll, I'll pass to kasia for the next question uh thank you and uh, anna i would like to stay with you um para, Paralympic athletes still uh, receive a little bit less recognition in comparison to Olympic athletes. And that's why raising awareness about this uh, issue is such important. But we learned that uh, you took part in the Toyota campaign uh, with Jan Ove Waldner, the legend, and called, uh, the campaign called uh, Start Your Impossible. And we would like to ask what was the goal of this campaign and uh, what impact the campaign uh, brought to your respective community? Yeah, that, that was really amazing to, to do, be a part of, actually. And Janove is a wonderful person to, to chat with and to, to, he has a lot of, he had a lot of questions regarding para table tennis. And that's so interesting to talk with a legend uh, that has been playing for so many years about a total different and unknown area for him. So, so that was really great. Um, I mean, it's for me, it's very important to be show, to show, to show our, our female table tennis, to be para table tennis, uh, that it's possible for everyone, that you can, everyone can play it. It doesn't matter. I mean, we're a big community. It's a, you're all, everyone is welcome. You can be old, you can be young, you can be uh, different sexuality, different gender, um, different uh, colors of the skin. Uh, everyone is welcome and everyone can play it. And for me, it was important when I got this chance, uh, it was 
important to take it to because I think it's important that we can show the world that it is possible and that everyone can play. And even Janova Waldner can play in a wheelchair. <laughs> Amazing. That's such an inspiration. <laughs> Thank you very I much. He, he did a good, great job there. I believe it also brought a fantastic impact. Um, so thank you so much, uh, Anna. I would like to uh, ask Elena, uh, actually towards the same topic, um, we believe that specific measures are needed to be uh, taken and sure to grow this female representation in para table tennis. Uh, can you share with us, um, in your opinion, what measures um, could be taken uh, it's not so easy, but uh, I think the first priority is to support the lowest classes, also to support the female in Africa and Oceania, because we are missing them. Uh, I think we can do that uh, with uh, mixed doubles, because not all the nation has uh, women and can, can, can't uh, create uh, mixed doubles. Maybe we can start with a special tournament, like a tournament on the International Women's Day, um, training camps, and of course, to motivate the new players through the stories of uh, such successful players. Amazing. Thank you for your advices. Um, and I would like to ask uh, Melissa also about uh, the same. Uh, what do you think uh, we can um, undertake? Which measures to to improve this aspect? Yeah, I, I think this is also quite quite difficult and and will take some time. But uh, I, I feel like here, particularly with the younger girls, it's a lot more of just having them more exposed to the sport and shown that there's so many opportunities and it's a fantastic sport to compete in. Because I know when I, I was just a junior, I was absolutely hooked on it and it was all I could think about. And it was the last thing I thought about during the day and then the first thing when I woke up. So, and then to have the opportunity to be able to compete at an Olympics, a Paralympics and Commonwealth Games, uh, it's it's the greatest feeling ever to be able to put on your national team uniform. And I think if all all girls can have this experience, it's, it's something that will last for a lifetime. So I just hope there's a lot of opportunities for, for younger girls to see this and, and give it a go. Thank you. And I think also one of the measures is to uh, show uh, role models uh, like you uh, to, to our table tennis family. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Okay, um, then it's it's time to uh, wrap up our interview, and uh, we really can't find enough words uh, to to say how much uh, inspiration is is just coming from you, uh, how much motivation you you are giving to us. Uh, so we would like to again thank you very much for sharing with us uh, your time, your interesting stories insight and all those advices um, and i believe outstanding people never do anything halfway and uh, that's why uh, we can see so much passion in you so much hard work and determination you know which brought you brought you to the top um, so again uh, good luck uh, in your future also in tokyo uh, we are keeping fingers crossed um, so thank you much for being part of this initiative. Thank, thank you for having us. Thank you. <laughs>